Wonderful night. Amen. What a night. What a night. What a night. Oh, Dr. Cephas is here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You know, we have heard the voice, you know, of, of, of Dr. Cephas speaking of the jewel generation. We've been in the, um, the world day of prayer. We have prayed with him on Saturday. That is our first personal contact with Dr. Cephas, one-on-one. -on -one. Amen. Starting off um, this course um, the character um, development um, um, course of the Jewel Generation. Dr. Sivas, welcome. We all want to give you a big St. Lucian welcome. Saints, put your hands together and welcome Apostle Dr. Russell Sivas. Hallelujah. Live. Hey. He said, give Jesus the praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 How are you, Dr. Sivas? I'm doing very well. I'm blessed. Highly Amen. favored. With increase on my mind. With increase on your Amen. mind. If Amen. it gets any better than this, I would think the rapture would have taken place. Hallelujah. <laughs> it doesn't Amen. get any better than that. Yes, praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Um, Dr. Sifas, we have um, uh, uh, a few persons on. Some are still making their way in. Um, these are persons who are interested in getting into the teaching of the Joel generation, the character manual, the 12th um, character man, um, manual, um, char characteristics of the Joel generation. And since you, you lighted the fire, um, I asked them if they would, if they would like you know, um, to be trained. And this is the response that we are getting tonight. The answer is yes, Dr. Sifas. And that is why they are there tonight. And this is our first night. We are looking at understanding understanding the jewel generation i mean there is generation y there is generation x you know and you're hearing so many generations so we need to understand the jewel generation and i couldn't think of a better person you know to tell us <coughs> of the jewel generation than dr cephas amen since i welcome dr cephas um let's we can open in a word of prayer and then Dr. Sifas Alilea will explain to us this vision of the Jewel generation, even from a biblical standpoint. It's not just a made-up name by Dr. Sifas, the Jewel generation. It is in the Bible. Amen. So I'm going to open in a word of prayer, and then we're going to hear what Dr. Sifas has to share with us. Hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks, Lord. We give you praise. Lord, we give you honor, Lord. We give you glory, Father. We exalt your name. We glorify your name. My God, we magnify your name. We praise your name, Father. Lord, we thank you for understanding. We thank you for your word, this prophetic word, this prophetic mandate that you have placed upon us, that you have placed upon the earth, Heavenly Father. This mandate for young people, oh God, in the last days, oh God, you said you made that promise that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters, hallelujah, shall prophesy. Young men shall see vision. Old men shall dream dreams, oh God. Father, we thank you. Father, we have said you. Yes, like Isaiah, Lord, glory. send Hallelujah. us. Lord, we have said Hallelujah. yes, Lord, that we want to go. We want to play our part, Heavenly Father, in this vision. And that's why we have met here tonight in St. Pusha, oh God. Lord, St. Pusha is Hallelujah. our Jerusalem, where we are standing oh off, oh God, to branch off the all parts thank of the Lord. world, oh God. We thank you, Father, for the impartation tonight. We thank you for the knowledge. Whatever Dr. Sifas will share with us tonight, oh God, he will help us with a better understanding of what we are doing and what we are called to do. Father, we thank you for inspiration. We thank you for enlightenment. We thank you for power tonight. Thanks and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. I welcome Apostle Dr. Russell um, Cephas, amen, with so much behind his name. I cannot tell you everything, all the qualifications that's behind his name. But one thing he always stands for is that he is for the dual generation and for the young people. Dr. Cephas, welcome. Amen. Amen. Well, amen. it's good to be with you guys this evening. It's really, really great. I want to apologize uh, for not being timely logging in to oh, okay. the conference call and uh when i realized there are a few other people not on uh that gave me a little bit of hope of not being so embarrassed by not being on time praise the lord <laughs> so uh, i'm so grateful uh you know to tell you the truth 
uh, Prophet Wellness is uh, astute in the history and background of the biblical formation of the Joe generation. He could have easily done this himself, but I thank you for the gracious invitation uh, to share a little bit with you. Now, I'm not going to be with you very long because I know uh, you're anxious to get into uh, this first lesson and learn about uh, the Joel generation, particular, particularly the character formation of the Joel generation. So uh, I want to say that uh, there are a number of years ago, maybe 10 years ago or so, I was with my chief apostle, uh, Apostle Joseph Vernon Duncan in uh, Trinidad and Tobago. He is the pastor of Divine Encounter Fellowship Ministries International. And what a dynamic ministry that is. Hallelujah. Uh, they're impacting. He has apostles under his uh, apostolic covering from uh, America, from South Africa, West Africa, East Africa, um, uh, throughout the Caribbeans, and in America as well. And so he's quite a leader amongst leaders. I'm proud that he is my apostle. I first heard of the Joel generation from Apostle Duncan. I didn't know what the Joel generation was. I didn't know who it was. I didn't know the activities or the functions of the Joel generation. Breaking my God. Breaking. Him. And so uh, to God be the glory. When I heard about the Joel generation and the biblical explanation of the Joel generation, found in Job chapter 2, and as I read it, as I heard the vision, I um, instinctively knew that this was not a ministry that was just going to come into existence by itself. It was, was it a ministry that was just going to uh, matriculate and evolve into what the Bible says it would be by itself. My first spiritual instinct and drive was that the Joel generation had to be birthed into existence. By birth, I mean by birthing through intercession. One of the primary words of intercession is to uh, uh, travail. Travail. You really can't have intercession without travailing. Well, travailing really means to struggle push to uh, contend for in birth. So uh, when we see the word intercession in the Bible, it's always uh, travailing in the Bible is always associated with a woman in labor, a woman giving birth. Amen. So I knew that this Joel generation, if it's going to be as great as the Bible says it is, then it must be prayed for. And it must be prayed for consistently. Yes. It must be prayed for with compassion. It must be prayed for with determination. It must be prayed for with strong biblical faith. So I gathered some leaders together from the four corners of the nation of the world, just a handful of us. And we started praying for the Joel generation almost 10 years ago. We haven't stopped praying. We won't stop praying until we see the full manifestation of the Joel generation in action in full uh, flourishing. So Amen. that's how I got involved with the Joel generation, by hearing a vision, by seeing what the man of God was able to see. And uh, good leadership inspires, motivates, and stimulates followers to follow and lay hold of vision. And so uh, I want to say to all of you on the Zoom conference call, call, please hear what Prophet Wellness has to say. Be inspired, be motivated, and again, lay hold of the vision to be trained and uh, developed in uh, the character traits of the Joel generation. This uh, movement, this global ministry is rooted and grounded again in uh, the Bible. In Joel chapter two, God says he would raise up 
a generation of people whose ministry shall exceed the ministry of every generation that has ever existed. Wow. That has to be some dynamic people. There has to be some super empowered people. Yes. There has to be some anointed people. There has to be a people that are totally sold out to the things of God. Yes. The people who are passionately and desiring to see the advancement of God's kingdom in the last days. The Joel generation will be a generation of young people from uh, many nations around the world. The Joel generation will be trained and equipped academically, but more importantly, they'll be trained and equipped in the things of God. The Joel generation will be a generation of worshipers, a generation that passionately loves God and loves the word of God. The yes. Joel generation will be a generation that will not compromise. They will not bend. They will not bow. They will not break under pressure of society. The Joel generation will be a generation that would rather sacrificially give their life for the cause of Christ than to deny the word of the living God. Hallelujah. And so uh, that's a little bit about the Joel generation. Now, I wrote, uh, by the grace of God, a small manual entitled The Character Development of the Joel Generation, Character Development Booklet Number One. And number two also has 12 character traits. Booklet number three also has an additional 12 character traits. And so, um, and book four. So, there will be at least 48 character traits that over a protracted period of time you'll be studying. But right now we are preoccupied with, concerned with book number one, uh, the character development traits, book number one. And that's where we're going to begin tonight. And um, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for the nation of St. Lucius. I'm excited, I'm excited for the parents, the leaders, the school teachers, and all of those that will play a, um, an important role in raising up the Joel generation in God's favorite nation and God's uh, uh, favorite island, St. Lucius. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Sifas. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, say hallelujah. What did you say, my sister? Breaking. You are breaking everything that break. I can hardly understand what you know. Don't worry, you, 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 we are hearing you clearly. I cannot fix it from my part, from my side here. But um, whatever you miss, it's also recorded. You, you will get it. So just stay tuned. Um, um, is there anyone who has any question um, um, to Dr. Cephas um, concerning the jewel generation or anything that you heard he said there tonight or anything you're not clear on? Question? Anyone? Please feel free to ask any questions that you would like. Please. None so far for me. I'm just listening. Any no, so no one everybody understands the Joel generation. Um, you understand that it is a biblical vision, it is a prophecy, amen. It's in the book of Joel, chapter two. We all understand that. Um, do we understand amen. the whole um uh, makeup of the Joel generation? Who are the people that must be involved in the Joel generation? Do we understand? Do we know yes. all the, the young, people who must young. be involved? Hello. The young children. The young, the young children. The young kids. Okay. Dr. Sipas, who are the people who must be involved girl. in the Joel generation? Well, uh, there are basically three categories of people that uh, we want to express concern for and have some type of activity with. And believe it or not, there is a dimension, a populace of the Joel generation that we can minister to now that have not even been born yet. 
Wow. There is a population of the Joe generation that has not been conceived yet. Mm. And so our ministry role for that Joe generation is through prayer and intercession and worship to establish and prepare an atmosphere in the earth, in your nation, that is conducive for them uh, developing in the Joel generation. Okay, and then there is the second populace of people. Those are children uh, right there that you have there, like Judah, other children. Amen. uh, From, I would say, uh, as early as they can walk and talk, they can begin to be trained as the Joel generation. And uh, these go on from children to adolescents to young adults, all a part of the Joel generation. And then there is the third segment of the Joel generation. They are adults, spiritually mature believers. They are parents that are passionately uh, connected to God and to the word of God. These are adults who must become mentors, disciplers, people who are concerned with raising up this generation of people to advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. These are the three segments uh, that constitute the Joel generation. Now, let me say this, please. In witchcraft, in voodoo, in the things of uh, uh, black magic and all different types of sorcery, when it comes to human life, they don't wait until human life is conceived and born into the world Mm. before they start attracting the attention of that human life. Even before it's conceived, they're speaking to it. Before it is birthed into the world, they are making chants and confessions and declarations over it in an effort to draw that seed to the things of darkness. Oh my God. If the powers of darkness do that, the Bible says that the children of the world are oftentimes wiser <laughs> than hmm. those of the kingdom of God. Hmm. So we don't want to neglect praying for the babies that have not even been conceived. We don't want to neglect not ministering to preparing a godly atmosphere and homes and other institutions of society that where children are born into the world, it makes it easier for them to come to Christ, makes it easier for them to be developed in the things of God. And so that first segment is very important. If we don't get them now, before they're conceived, then we surrender or abort them to the cause of darkness. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know that that we want to minister to young people that are alive, that are physical. We can touch them, see them, train them, develop them, love them. But then we also need that third group. We also need mentors, uh, disciplers, godly parents, Godly people in ministry, apostles and uh, prophets and prophetess and evangelists and pastors and teachers and missionaries and just godly adults to participate in raising up the Joel generation. Dr. Zephyrs, thank you so much um, for your time and even um, um, ad- advising us on how we should go about the Joel generation. But some, um, someone may ask, um, do I have to have the 12 character, um, uh, 12 character traits of the dual generation to be able to participate in the dual generation? Um, do they must have it, Dr. C first, um, the 12 character traits? No, I don't think they have to have it, but if you're going to be strong and mighty and participate without in advancing the kingdom in the earth, then you'll certainly want to have not only those 12 character traits, but other character traits that we'll be providing for you in the future as well. 
Otherwise, what I'm saying is that you have to begin somewhere.